question is from gate 2020 mechanical engineering paper set 2 question number 38 uniaxial compression test data for a solid metal bar of length 1 meter is shown in the figure so we have stress versus strain graph and the relation between them is shown using this white curve the bar material has linear elastic response from o to p followed by a non linear response followed by non linear that is from p to q to r the point p represents the yield point of the material the rod is pinned at both ends the minimum diameter of the bar so that it does not buckle under axial loading before reaching the yield point is dash mm so let's start with the given data first thing that is given is length of the rod is 1 meter from the graph we can write yield stress as 100 mpa ultimate stress as 130 mpa the rod is given to be pinned at both ends so that we can decide the effective length of the rod which is kl now as the ends are pinned k value is 1 the effective length that will that is going to buckle or bend after it is subjected to compression will be the complete length l and that is why we have the effective length as well to be 1 meter we have to find out d minimum that is the minimum diameter of the rod such that it does not buckle before reaching the yield point we can calculate the buckling load value using two methods it is given that it should not buckle before reaching the yield point so we will have to consider the yield stress value into the cross section area of the rod and one way is to calculate using eiler's buckling load which is pi square ei by kl whole square and these two should be equal to each other because this load that will be acting at yield point should not be greater than the eiler buckling load otherwise the column will buckle hence we can write sigma y into area of cross section of the rod will be pi by 4 this d that we have to calculate d minimum square is equal to i is also corresponding to this d minimum itself so we can write pi square e i will be pi by 64 d raised to 4 into kl square we have already calculated to be 1 hence we can take 1 square now in this equation we know the value of sigma y and pi is a constant the one unknown is d minimum we have another unknown that is young's modulus young's modulus of the material is not mentioned anywhere in the question we can use the graph to calculate young's modulus using graph don't forget young's modulus is the slope of the line joining o and p that is it is the slope of the stress strain graph before yield point beyond yield point the slope is not constant and hence we do not have a constant young's modulus so that is why we will take sigma y by epsilon y or stress as stress at yield point upon strain at yield point and the values that are given here are 100 divided by 0.002 so let's keep e also in mpa which is nothing but 0.5 into 10 to the power 5 mpa just putting this value in the we get d min square is equal to 100 into pi into 64 divided by 4 into all of the numerator values 4 into pi square into 0.5 into 10 to the power 5 into pi you have to write all these values very correctly otherwise there will be a mistake in the calculation so the answer that we get here is 3200 divided by pi square into 10 to the power 5 hence d minimum is under root of this value and we get it to be 0.0569 all the values are in si unit so we get this answer also in si unit that is meter si unit of length that is meter now let's see in which unit we need the answer we need the answer in mm so let's just multiply this with 1000 and we get it to be 56.9 mm we are being asked to round it off to one decimal place so we have the answer in one decimal place 56.9 let's write it here 56.9 mm to study stability of columns in detail 
you can refer to nptel video lecture 37 stability of columns 1 lecture series on strength of materials by professor sk bhatacharya he is from department of civil engineering iit kharagpur i hope the solution will help you thank you Thank you.